What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. We focus on, I think, the coolest autos. And we have a really, really cool automobile here. <sighs> Dai Jiro what Yoshihara, up? my really good friend, brother from another mother. Oh, that cool, huh? Well, let me tell you, let me tell you okay. something that you probably don't know. Okay. I think, I, not I think, I know, you are the first professional drifter I've ever taken pictures of. Really? Yes. Is that the one we went to uh, balcony? Yes. The spoon car? Yes. Back in 2007? 2006 or five. Oh, wow. I don't actually remember, but it was a long time ago. And that was your first drifter? Well, yes, and that was in your S13, the black one, right? Right. So Pacific Rim. Yeah, Pacific Rim. That it was that long ago. Can you oh man, that? no! I mean, that was kind of honor that I was the first drift guy that you shot. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, it, and it's kind of crazy because it's like I, I've been so lucky to be able to see you grow over the years as a driver. So do I. I mean, your your <laughs> as a photographer and your 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 championship and you doing uh, TV commercials and movies and just every, everything that you've done and also your SEMA projects. Like, it's just really cool to be able to see your career from the outside. You know, I mean, I'm just capturing it visually. I know the struggle is real. You know, you, you guys are grinding so much. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's so interesting to be able to go from 2006, seven, eight, ninth, like all the way to 11 to your championship. Yeah. And beyond that, it's been really cool to kind of see that and capture it for myself. Uh, which, by the way, your the red S13, the discount tire one, yeah, I think is still probably my favorite S chassis of all time. Okay, good because to know. It, it's just like it's kind of a groundbreaking build. Yeah, right? at the time it was so fresh. Yeah, yeah. It, and it had some things on the car that like I've never seen in another drift car ever, like some redundancy built in, right? I think it's, yeah. it's one of the first ones that had uh, so much in terms of reliability, right. but, and also it just looked amazing. It just, the way the livery was, it's simple, but also with the Rocket Bunny body kit, it just looked so cool. Yeah, uh, that was like a first. I mean, Rocket Bunny wasn't really super popular at the time, and then one of the Falcon Tire crew wanted to use that. Actually, at first I was like, oh, that doesn't look like super cool, to be honest, at the time, because I wasn't really familiar with the look. But man, after you know we put it on and won the championship, Everybody loves it. But, so. And that's the thing is back then the body kits were like coming out. Right. Right? Like Origin and... Hi! Good Hi! Good Hi! Oh my God! Hi! Good to see you! Oh my God! Oh my God. <laughs> we're doing interviews! Oh, I'm sorry! I'm, I'm trying to be you and I think... <laughs> I mean, you're taking pictures too, right? Yeah, so. I'm taking pictures too. So Larry... So, we're, we're exchanging jobs. Roll, roll the reversal you're, right here. Talking. You're taking photos. I know, you're doing interviews. Yeah. I'm taking Nowadays, photos. Man, you have to do everything, huh? I try. Oh, amazing. You know, there's so much going on. Nice to see well, you. Well, good to see you. Yeah. All right, so okay. back to the S13. Yeah. So the, the S13, what people don't realize is you guys just built it in a couple months, right? Well, to get to that point, of course, you know, uh, on and off more, more, more time, but uh, the reason why I got on the S13 was I was driving the Lexus IS, which I don't think many people knows. Only lasted like five rounds. I totaled the car uh, like fifth round of uh, 2009. So we had like a two more rounds to go. So Falcon basically had the S13 chassis uh, in the warehouse and we had like a two weeks to go to the next round. So we just, you know, didn't sleep two weeks straight and then just built the car. Um, that was the beginning of that discount tire 13. Yeah, so uh, you guys will kind of see this theme throughout, you know, if you watch Autofocus. <laughs> it sounds really bad, but I was actually there. Oh, you yeah. know, yeah, I was there when you wrecked your car. And honestly, that probably was one of the worst drift wrecks yeah. in Formula Drift history. Yeah, possibly the impact wise because it was Seattle, which is one of the fastest entry speed. And uh, I basically flicked the car to the uh, the other direction and hit into the wall straight. 
like n not much offset, so the impact was pretty harsh. But so, I mean, in terms of speed, how many miles per hour? I would do you say think? like at least ninety to zero. Not really zero. It's not like done. Uh -huh. If that's the case, I'd I'd be pretty much done, right? It it, it did you know offset to somewhere, but uh, pretty good like reducing maybe ninety to like fifty or forty or something. Yeah, you know, everything flies out and. So the story with the S13, I love this story. Uh, it was Ross Petty's car, right? Oh, you know. Yeah. Okay. It was Ross Petty's car, and I had, I think it had an SR at the time. Yeah. But then you guys put in a V8. I think at the time, it was already just a shell. Yeah, and then we just decided to do V8. The V8 swap wasn't that popular, but it just happened to have, I mean, Falcon happened to have some extra V8 sitting around, so. Yeah, that's how we decided to do it. All right, so many years later, now we're here, you have the Subaru BRZ, which um, it's just like a mangle of motor here. Like it's, it seems like, it's, it looks like the biggest motor in, in one of these cars. Like I, I can't believe it actually fits. Yeah, it's actually fits perfectly, right? I mean, we've been using this chassis and the motor setup Actually, this is going to be uh, year number seven. So it's nothing new, right? It's, it's been like this for the last six years. And yeah, so. so it, and part of that is because it's nice for you as a driver to kind of develop this chassis over time and you're constantly improving it. So I know there's so much to go over around this whole thing. So let's just start at the motor. Tell us a little bit about this motor package. Okay, so basically this is a Chevy LS based uh, RHS Brock motor with a Garrett turbo. Um, makes around 900 to 1000 horsepower. Don't lie. No, seriously. Don't lie. Look at this thing. Okay, Don't so lie. Otherwise we can make more. Well, how much the more? I, they say like 14 to six, like 1600 or something. All right, but, that's the title right there. Daijuri Yushihara, 1600 horsepower, BRZ. But that's going to be light though. That's a, that's a potentially. Because, you know, at that point, you're going to break the axle, you're going to break the transmission. So I don't want to get that much horsepower. We don't need it, right? And also, uh, we need better uh, setup with the uh, injection, fuel injection and stuff like that to get more boost and all that stuff. So right now, max out and then it's around 950. I'm not lying. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, and you don't run nitrous then? I don't because we had a, we have a turbo and you know, it's a V8. So lower end or mid end is already pretty good. So yeah, no, that's really, really cool. I love that so much. The turbos are just so big. Actually, we downsized this year. To, to gain more lower RPM. Uh-huh. We, we have bigger ones. Wait, so... Oh, it's only one turbo? Yeah, one, one turbo, yeah, oh, single turbo. Okay. All right. So this turbo, uh, and the reason why you downsized it is because of just to reduce lag? Yeah, not that I had the lag too much to begin with, but like I say, I'm not really maximized the turbo size. So why don't we go down and maybe try to gain more in the lower to mid-end? Mid and so here we are to actually test that right now as well. All right, so, so tell me about your suspension. We have KW suspension. So KW came up with the, this new technology and then we just got the new three-way uh, competition setup. Um, but you know what though? I have a guy who can talk better than I can. No, 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 no. I don't want the guy. Oh, oh you don't want the guy? No. no. He's right I here. Know, I don't want the guy. <laughs> no. Hi. Hi. I don't want the guy. Hey, Chris. Uh, I love you. Uh, Help me out, please. No. <laughs> Just tell me a little bit about the suspension. So, how long have you been with KW suspension? Oh, okay. KW, um, it's been year 13, 14. I think since uh, 2006, right? Yeah. So it's been a long time. One of the uh, the longest supporter for myself, um, and you know they always give me the new stuff. And this off season they got this new one, which I'm still testing. So I can't really talk too much about it, but I know it's a te new technology. So the dampers react quicker. Um, so that's actually one of the focus for today's testing. We are like trying to dial the new KW suspension. What is this though? Why is there a thing here? What is that for? So this is the uh, adjust, uh, low speed, high speed, compression, rebound. Um, so you can do it here. 
you don't have to go all the way. I mean, oh, 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 so this, because this is normally. That's just compression. I'm sorry, this is actually. Comp That's just compression. So high speed, low speed compression. Rebounds on the bottom, it's inverted front monitor. You're compressed. I'm always compressed. Okay, so this is three way, right? So right. this is like the ex external. Yeah. This is this is like too advanced for me. This is for like this is like off-road stuff. I don't yeah, this is that. Wh what the hell? I, I, I just, really? I just kidding. <laughs> I mean, now nowadays a lot of uh, competitors using this type of style, but yeah, this is one of the you know top-notch technology. Cool. Wow. I love the livery this year, by the way. I love also the fact that you release your livery on Gran Turismo. Like that's some kind of flex. That's like pretty cool so in a way what you do is you get it designed ahead of time in Gran Turismo yeah so I can see what the car looks like in in like a 3d vision uh, and then I can do some revise before I can even make it, it make it in uh, real life which is really help yeah. um, but you think it, it's cool I like it I okay so this but, is this is the first time I'm seeing it in okay. real life because I've actually seen it uh, you know, on your Instagram, posting it, uh, you know, in Gran Turismo. But it, it's actually really cool to see it in real life. Let's uh, kind of go around here. So tell me about the wheels and uh, brake and tire setup here. Okay, so this is a new sponsor for this year, uh, Titan 7 wheel. Uh, with, the, you know, my special color edition. So it's got the, my logo in it too. Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah, they did something special for me, which yeah. is great and uh, stop tech brake which uh, we've, we've been using like the last few years and then it's been always working really good uh, so those are the combo uh, tell me about the tires are these so the tire tires? it's uh, one of the longest support of mine as well it's a fucking tire uh, this is our rt615 k plus uh, which we've been using the same tire for last three four seasons and it's proven you know the guy who won the championship last three years are using the same tire, so... The guy, meaning James Dean. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about the rear here. So yeah, same thing, KW suspension three-way and stop take, stop take dual brake system. So one is for the hood brake, one is for the e-brake. Wow, this is a really neat setup. Yeah. It's like so beefy. It is beefy and looks heavy, but it's very light for the size. Um, so I'm not even like using the capacity at all because drifting you don't really need like that much braking but it's always good to have the big capacity just in case yeah and then we don't really have to change the pads that often either maybe like once in two seasons so. yeah because I've seen like uh, for example on some of Daigo's cars that he yeah. builds he builds ca uh, cars with rotors that are solid he doesn't even have vented rotors on yeah. some of these cars yeah I, I mean a lot of people see you especially rear use like a, some OE, like a stock brake and just swap like G32 or something like that. Yeah. Tell me about this arms here. So that's uh, my crew chief, uh, Chris Eimers, and uh, Mike Kojima design and then made, you know, we've been constantly changing and developing. Um, all the arms on my car are custom. Wow. Yeah, so Mike Kojima and Chris can design and actually make. That's surprising because usually a lot of the guys use wise fab or like pre-made arms. Wise fab's good, you know, I know that and then that's one way to go, but we also wanted to try something what we think is good. So that's uh, that's why we've been using the custom ones pretty much, you know, ever since we got this car. Huh. And then every year is like a it, little changing and um, so this is same as last year's set setup, but uh, he's making another set for this season. Um, hopefully that'll work. We're gonna test it first before the season starts. Uh, and tell me about the rear end on here. Rear end? That's a, a winter uh, quick change. Um, it's a spool. So it's basically, you know, it's it, it spins uh, at the same time the whole time. Uh, we've been using this since size 13 and it's just really strong. So I never had any issue. I mean, I have to do uh, overhaul every, uh, every season but we have two so just rotating use one season and then it's gonna be the backup and the new one comes in and then do the uh, overhaul and never had any issue yeah I think on your s13 it was probably one of the earliest cars with the winter's quick change oh is that right I mean I think so I don't know 
But yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But you know, one downside of this is a little, little too heavy. So I know like some like some other guys don't use it on purposely because it's too heavy. You know, we know it's a strong, but like Stefan Papadakis, I don't think he uses because he thinks it's disadvantage, which I understand too. Yeah. No, oh, that's cool. Well. Let's go to the back here. Okay, of course, rear radiator. This I love. This is kind of one of the things that makes every car different. Yeah. The the cooling setup. Like some people do lay flat. Some people do. I don't know where the radiator is more in the rear of the car. Like it, it's different on every car. Ooh. Different on every build. So I do have a question for you, Dai. Okay. Your S13 was left-hand drive. Yes. And then now this BRZ is right-hand drive. But actually this was left-hand drive to start with. And I had like a three, four seasons. And then uh, maybe like three seasons ago, I asked this guy, Chris Eimer, if there is a way to move around. Just, just me being super picky, we had a time in off season. We didn't change the car. And then he's like, okay, we have to change the layout of the uh, engine because uh, we are changing the exhaust manifold location and stuff like that. So he's like, actually, left front, making right-hand drive makes uh, makes sense to do the better layout. I don't know if that makes sense for you. Oh, I see what you mean in terms of like yeah, it's, the 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 steering right. and sort like the brake booster yeah, stuff, yeah. all of that accessories. Um, it actually made more sense to go right-hand drive. Right. But for you, is it? Obviously, it's more preference because you grew up in Japan. Yeah. And you grew up driving. And you actually learned how to drive on right hand drive. Exactly. Right. So it's more like mentally, I feel a little bit more comfortable in right hand drive. But again, you know, I won the championship with the S13 with the left hand drive. And I don't really have any issue with it. So it's just me being a little picky. I see. Okay. So, and then tell me this. Um, You've been driving Pikes Peak too. That's another thing that I've been lucky enough to follow you as you're kind of trying. Yeah. What one of the many things that you do, including Time Attack, Pikes Peak, road racing, uh, Lamborghini Super Trofeo, right? With uh, with uh, your good buddy, uh, not really buddy, more more more. Um, how how could I say no, this? No, he's not, he's my buddy, man. He is your buddy. Just kidding. Uh, he's my senpai, like yeah, senior. Senpai, yeah. Right. See, he's your senior, so he's yeah. legitimately your senpai. For sure. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, we had a really really good time visiting Arido in Japan. Yeah. Um, in Yokohama, right? In Yokohama. In Yokohama, where he used his pointer on me, which honestly was a dream. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. His his little JDM pointer. Oh, uh, when, when you were driving a sim. Yeah, when I was driving a sim, <laughs> could you imagine getting lessons from the legend, like, Manabu Arido, yeah. right? I mean, wow. So, with that said, um, you've done so many things uh, on your Pikes Peak car. Is it right-hand drive or left-hand drive? That was a left-hand drive. Okay. All right, so that's kind of cool that you can switch in between because I know there's plenty of drivers who actually cannot. Oh yeah? I mean, well, I mean, they prefer not to. Yeah, yeah, but it just, you know, it just takes time and I'm sure all the good drivers can get used to it. And, you know, on top, uh, our spoon, spoon speed time attack car was center drive. Oh, so, so it's in between. <laughs> yeah, center, right, and left. That's yeah. Well, uh, you're going to go do some more testing. We're actually at Irwindale Speedway, uh, and uh, I'll be able to actually experience it later, potentially. Yeah, right? yeah. I can yeah. get a little ride with you. We'll save the ride for you, for sure. Oh, OK. All right. Thank you so much, Dai. Good to see you, as always. All right. Yeah. See you. Good luck. Thank you. Oh, so what's this here? It's a good luck charm that I'm, uh, my friend from Japan sent it to me, and then I just keep using it. And what's this? Oh, uh, th uh, this one? Yeah. Same thing, but the sticker version. It's from the same temple. It's kind of like a famous uh, old temple. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> so this goes to 11. Actually, after fall, same shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's only full setup. What is this for? That's a boost. 
Oh, it's for boots. No. Oh. There's a ton of okay. So you could turn up the boost if you want. Yep. Oh, pretty cool. But I'm already messed up. Oh, nice. You must be so happy to be back in this car. Yeah, and you know, Arvindale is my favorite track. So it's really good to be here. And we, you know, especially with other FD drivers and some other drivers. It's good, man. You've had good results here too. Uh, not last couple of years. I mean, it was good, like best eight or something. No, I think you got a second place, right? That's maybe like a two years ago, three years yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is my favorite track. Not one of the five favorites, so yeah. Well, You'll be glad to know this is my first time riding at Irwindale. You know, I've no, ri no yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. I've ridden with so many people oh my gosh. in all different tracks, but I've never ridden at Irwindale before. Dude, that means a lot. <laughs> Am I gonna send it to <laughs> Wall? <laughs> well, here's the thing. This is my home track. Um, a oh, lot no. of people don't know this, but I lived maybe two miles from this track. Uh, for the longest time when I actually first moved out uh, of my parents' place. But now I still live just about 15 minutes away. Okay. And this is my home track. Um, and I've shot so much drifting here, you know, D1 versus US. Yep. Um, pretty much every Formula Drift since yep. 2006 till now. Um, yeah, I. So it, it, it feels really good to be here, to be back. And also, I love the fact that it, the track is back. You know, for a while, we didn't know if it right. was gonna be. Yeah, now it's back for at least like three, four more seasons, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is dope. Yeah. yeah. The first time, that's, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like you only jump in, you know, a lot of different, different drivers, but never in Irvingdale, huh? Never. I've, I've ridden in, you know, in Long Beach, um, uh, Atlanta a lot, you know, it, all these other different tracks except for Irwindale. Cool. For whatever reason. Let's show you what it likes, man. Yeah. so much die for no showing problem. us that was an honor to have you as a first time in Irvingdale Re really <laughs> this, this car is so crazy and I, I love that like this community is just so cool right yeah. so we go up there we pull up and then Forsberg I think I think it was probably third lap for him too <laughs> and he's like hey I just kind of want to tandem with die you know he just yeah. joins the, the the he enters the building he just joins the party right um, <laughs> and then of course Odie, you yeah, know, now super I say, nice. Can I can I follow? <laughs> yeah, it was uh, cool. Yeah. It was cool just to see how you're so busy. Yeah, it's like you're doing so many things, but you don't even think about it anymore, right? Well, yeah, for sure. I've been doing this for over twenty years, so yeah. So not to it's think second too much. nature. <laughs> <laughs> um, so definitely, hey guys, Dai just started his own YouTube channel, so check out Ooh. his channel. The link's gonna be in the description. Definitely give him a sub. He's gonna come out with one video per week, right? At least, yeah. Yeah, so if you wanna follow Dai's adventures, you know, we really fell in love uh, with his series Behind the Smoke way back when on the GT channel. Yep. But now he's gonna start his own thing, so definitely give him a sub. And uh, you, you won't be disappointed, because you'll also see my, me on his channel. Yeah, a yeah. lot, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> so I think that's a wrap. Thanks, guys.